Okay, so we can talk all day long about relationship building, about customer interfacing, about product strategy and all those fun things that we've discussed. But if this isn't right, nothing else will be right. Okay, so when I say the word, and I have to give John Schneider credit uh, for sending this over to me, done a little bit of tweaking. Is that the guy at the, the Big Chicken? That's Josh Halper. Oh, John was with him. Oh. Um, but I love this in the sense of it, it not only applies to sports, but it also applies to what we do in business. So when I say this word mindset, what's your definition of mindset? Optimism. Willingness. And execution. Okay. What about you? When it, well, when I think of the word mindset, I think of like how you're how you're going to tackle something. Be more specific. Like, what's your approach? Okay. What's your approach? How are you going to achieve a task? Achieve a task. How optimal or or how are you looking at this tax task with? Um, but I, I, I think it's how you wake up every day. I was speaking, I was speaking to, a, to, a an Uber driver that, that took me from, a, from the airport in New York to, to, to home the other day, the guy from Colombia, he got his, his, he was a business operator in Colombia, got people in the shop. They stole everything. Then the guy came into the, then came into the U S while COVID lost three of his family relatives due to COVID. He then went to work for construction, fell off of the fourth floor. He was three months in the hospital, plus four months in a nursery, then bought a car in New York, started to operate uh, Uber and transportation, got a gun in Queens, got his car stolen, then was able to stand up, get a lease, Put a down payment, buy another car, and the guy is now. He, and and you look, you listen to his story and his mindset to life, and it's it's incredible. It's how all the shit that he's gone through, and he still has a good, a, a healthy mindset, smiling every day, right? So, so that would be what I would consider this this growth mindset, right? Growth versus fixed is something that in the business world, you guys need to get used to hearing because you'll hear this, well, what's a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset? We can define these two things any way we want when, we talk, when we're talking about mindset. Growth mindset obviously is somebody that's consuming knowledge, that's learning, that asks questions, that seeks out mentorship, right? That's a growth mindset. Fixed mindset is somebody that goes into any sort of sales process or any sort of product strategy and says, this is the way it's going to be done. So fixed is someone who's not flexible and growth is someone who can be flexible. About. Easiest way to define. It. Now, inside of these, there's positivity, which Stephen just described, but there's also negativity. And that creeps into everything that we do. And the reason why mindset is so vitally important and why this is applicable to what we're talking about today is because if this isn't right, how does that come across to your customers? If this isn't right with you or the whole karma isn't right with you, how does that come across to your customers, to your people that are sitting across from you asking you questions. They'll be able to notice it. Okay, they'll be able to notice it. People notice when the mindset is not right. So what I want you to do real quick is write down a couple of goals that you want to achieve this week coming up. Right? Just this week. Just this week coming up. I don't want you to do a longer view. I want to know it could be as small or as large as you want. Starting on Monday morning, when I get out of bed, I'm going to do this for the week. Two goals that you want to accomplish this week. That's a good one,
Good. You're quick. Yeah. Right? Steven, you good? Good, good, good. Awesome. So think about it from this perspective. Right? Goal setting goes towards mindset. Right? It goes towards that growth mindset. Goals equal growth. What happens if you don't set goals? If you don't have a mindset. Well, you it's not that you don't have a mindset. You don't have something to focus on. All right. So you talked about focus last week in our one-on-one, -on -one, right? So focus is key, is key. Do you write down goals each week? No. You should. So we talk about mindset being goal-oriented, but it's also formulating habits and action, success. Action and planning. How am I going to achieve them? And execution. Okay. Action, planning, execution. If you fly blind into whatever you're doing, you don't have actionable goals. If you don't have a habit of success, you can't be successful. So every week, you should even do one goal that you want to accomplish each week. What is that one thing that you want to do this week? It could be, I want to smile in gratitude every day this week. It could be as small as that. It could be, I want to introduce myself to more people at work this week. It could be, I want to, I want to show my team appreciation for who they are as individuals this week. I want to show them by doing. I want to show them by other ways, right? So goals don't have to be large goals that you think are, are pie in the sky. It can be as simple as I want to reach out to one person and say, hey, you're valued, right? Mm -hmm. So goals can be defined however you want to define them. Most important thing in that is that your mindset matches what those goals are. That you really feel in your heart of hearts that this is a growth mindset and that you can accomplish these goals. Now, we'll get to those in, in a second, all right? So when we look at math, plays a major role as far as what goals are. Why? I think the last one's wrong. Huh? Nine times eight is 72. <laughs> so... We always focus on the negative. We always stray to the negative and the negativity associated with mindset. Now, you didn't mention that this was right. You didn't mention that that was right. You didn't mention that that one was right or that one or that one or that one or that one. Right. You immediately picked out that this was wrong. Yeah. And as humans, that's what we do. We immediately focus on what's wrong instead of thinking about what's right. right. That permeates our mindset in different ways. Now, we're sitting here at Bentley University in a beautiful, beautiful, opulent university, right? Great rooms and whatnot. But I would suggest and contend that our mindset hasn't strayed from back when the cavemen were in caves. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we still look at what's negative and we make negative more, we care about the negativity than the positive. Hey, but you have to think about this from a sales perspective. If you're going into a customer and immediately you look at this and not all those, how does that displace you amongst your customer? Never going to forget about that wrong thing. Okay, never going to forget about that wrong thing. It's going to permeate your thoughts. What else? You're not driving confidence. Okay, you're not driving confidence. You're always going to be thinking about this thing here. There's a lot of permutations that can happen if we don't focus on that portion of our mindset. Okay? And like I said to you before, not much has changed since 6000 BC when these guys on the earth. The reason why they're called cavemen is because they were afraid to go outside of their caves. Now, if you go outside of your cave, there's a whole world that you guys can go and you can explore. And yet these guys felt the need to stay inside this cave this whole time. Why? They felt comfortable. They felt comfortable. What else? They knew that was 
there were they were afraid of what was outside of the okay, cave. so they were afraid of what was outside they were comfortable being in the cave right do you guys ever feel that way that comfort yeah is easiest course than what yeah. okay yeah so not much has changed in a matter of fact this right here is very, very important. Yep. And the reason why they were afraid to go outside and porridge is because they knew that this represented survival. This represented survival for them. Outside of the cave, they could have had carrots. They could have had food. They thought of the negativity, but they didn't think of the positivity. Correct. If I go outside, something negative might happen. In here, I'm safe. In here, I have fire. I have survival. I'm comfortable. What mindset do you think this is? This is a fixed mindset. Stephen? Fixed 100%. Okay, so they, cavemen, had a fixed mindset. Now, again, today, we're operating under the same mindset. Yeah. We're operating under the same approach. And I would say most decisions in life are not life or death. We might not make the sale. I might strike out in a ball game, but our minds think that this is life and death. That if I don't sell enough textiles, I'm not going to make the sale. I'm done. Right. Again, goes towards fixed mindset. How then do we make this into a growth mindset? What are some small ways that we as sales professionals, as individuals, as business owners, as business operators can tell our folks, hey, listen, the old way of doing things still permeates, but there's another way that we can look at things. And think about it from your customer's perspective. They're expecting you to go in there with a different level mindset. They're expecting you to be solution-oriented problem solvers. Other, not these folks that are looking at their problems and saying, oh, here's the issue. Can't fix it. Now, what I want you guys to do real quick is I want you to humor me. All right? I want you to humor me with this. Um, I want you to count. Let me see if the lights go off here. Okay, perfect. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to focus here. Okay, and I want you guys to count how many balls go up in the air. This is a test of selective attention. I think I've seen this. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? How many did you count? 19. 19? You've already seen this? Yeah. So I'm sure it's about the same. So you yeah. counted 19. Let's see what the correct answer is. We, we, I, I, I can't leave you hanging. The correct answer is 15. Okay. So you were four off. How are you four off? The monkey came this right. How are you four off? I saw, uh, I don't know if I confused some of the dribbles with passes. Okay. Because of people crossing around. All right. Passes. But did you see the gorilla? This video is from research by Daniel Simons and Christopher Shabrin.
Did you see that gorilla in the? I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. I saw this in psych class in high school. I didn't see the gorilla. So while our brains might process everything our eyes see, the mind might never become aware of it. Think about it from a customer perspective. If you're not able to see the gorilla when you're in front of your customers, you're done. You're done. Your focus, as we talked about, and your attention are the keys to the information processing that filters what goes on in the conscious mind. We as sales professionals have to see this gorilla. Have to see it. We have to train ourselves that although this is what we're, we're told to look for, that we have to see the gorilla. We have to supremely focus on what we don't see. And our mindset has to be there so that way when we focus, we can see what this gorilla is, what the objection is, what the customer is feeling, what the customer is thinking. So therefore, what we saw earlier, a negative bias is really a negative attention bias. And what I mean by a negative attention bias is where we focus on the negative as a focused on the positive. We focused on that one small thing as opposed to focusing on all the good that happens, on all the right information that we had in front of us, right? Our mindset and our focus has to be supremely focused on what that gorilla is and where that gorilla is, right? If you miss those opportunities, and if you focus on only the negative, you're gonna miss your sale. You're going to miss the opportunity to sell. So does that make me a negative person if I notice the wrong math right away? Or yes. does it just make me It means that you're a negative person. Like negative I optimist. Think, like, I think that your eyes immediately and your reaction was immediately to go to the negative. Right. And say, well, you got that one wrong. Right. That's what this is all about. Right. So if you're in front of a customer and you have this negativity bias, what immediately is your mind going to go towards? It's going to go towards comfortability. It's going to go towards, I'm not comfortable. I'm not going to say this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to push the envelope. My mindset isn't going to be right. I'm going to focus on all the things like this. Oh, shit, this is life or death. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, going back, going back to, the, to the numbers, you might, you might look at it as a perspective that you have a mindset of wanting to strive for greatness and, and doing everything correctly and if something's not right you want to you want to fix that maybe maybe that was more or less your your call mm -hmm. not necessarily focusing on or, or converting maybe converting what's wrong to making it right yep and i wouldn't say that that's wrong i would contend that that could be a, a, an option but it's interesting to note that over the years more people tend to focus on this right now he could have said Hey, listen, I think that, that we can make this right. Or there were words that Nathan could have said to say, hey, um, have you checked your, your math? Instead of saying, I think that that's nine times eight, 72, it's wrong. Or saying to a customer, you're not right. You're wrong. We do this and this and this, you know, you don't see the value. The, 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 and, and, and a simple question now is you're going to, you're going to a customer and they, Hey Zen, how do you how do you see the economy? And you might you, you might you might enter you might enter with a negative thought and 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 and, and be out, be fully out. Or you might you might focus on the positive aspects of what's going on in in, in the U.S. Might leave the customer with a with a great sense of of investing, buying, building, growing. So. The, the, optim the optimism behind is super important. The, the U.S. economy has operated for many, many years like a carousel, like a roller coaster. It's called, um, that cycle is called something, but I can't remember the business terminology. Oh, or something cycle. It's like a roller coaster. So you've got to know that. 
And it's okay to verbalize that to your to your, wave. your folks. It's a, wave. Yeah, it's a wave. It's a perpetual wave. Yeah. You know, and, and that's something that it's okay to talk about and say, hey, listen, we're in this down cycle right now. A couple things change here and there. You know, that economy will be boosting again like it was in 2016. Like it was for the four years before regulations and all these other things kicked in. Right? It goes up and it goes down. Like anything. Like sales. Sales goes up and it goes down. Right? For re re real world strategy, say that. It's a tongue twister that can help combat these negative thoughts. Number one, practice makes permanent. Is that true? Absolutely. You believe that? You go back. You go, you go back to the first slide. Athletes. You you go to the slide of the athletes and sports. So no practice, no no success. Michael Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. Brady, all those guys. One of the best things I've heard. It's not easy, but through practice and practice and practice, practice makes what? Absolutely not. Dismantle that belief system. Practice makes improvement. You can always better your best. You can always go beyond anything that you have ever done. You never hit a state of perfection. You're always bigger than what you do. And so all you're looking for are new breakthroughs through practice and practice and practice. You'll get better and better and better. It's not easy. So practice makes improvement. You can right. always better your best. Always better your best. That's a good one. And there's always somebody out there that's trying to better your best. Unless you're so from a competitor's perspective, there's always somebody out there that's nipping at you. Yeah. That's looking to see, all right, what's Nathan doing? What's Steven, what's Steven doing? How can I take some of the market share that you've gained? How can I take some of those relationships that you've gained, that you've gone up that pyramid? How can I then take some of those away? So four strategies here, practice makes permanent. We'll go into these. Control your controllables. Positivity bias. And then what I like to call or what uh, John called neurolinguistic programming. Now, a little bit more intricate from a sales perspective, but there is something to be said. So practice. Thoughts, positivity thoughts, write goals down every single week. Or day. Or day. Whatever you, whatever cadence you want. If you write it down, it's like Malcolm Gladwell said, it's the rule of 10,000 hours. The more you do something, the better off you are at it. 100%. The more you read, the more you learn, the more you structure, the more you practice, the better off you're going to be. Same thing from a sales and a selling perspective. I practice my pitch all the time. I practice what I'm going to say in front of my physicians all the time. I, I practice what I'm going to say when I'm having courageous conversations. I'm not too old to show you guys and say, hey, listen, when I was away in Denver, I role played. Courageous conversations. 45 years old. And when I go away to Denver, or when I go away on, on work functions, they have us practice. Because at the end of the day, we can always better what we're doing. We can always better our best. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes improvement. All right? Unless you ask Alan Iverson. <laughs> Control your controllables. I have that thing that I do with the baseball bat. I don't know if you guys have seen yeah, that, but, yeah. but think about it. What you can focus on and what you don't want to focus on. How can you, con how, how can you control your controllables? Do all of these things right here. Think about it from a fixed and a growth mindset perspective. Right? These are things that we should be doing and your reps should be doing every day. That you should be doing every day. Things that we take for granted that the top 1% of sales professionals do all the time. All the time. Non-negotiables. There's a slide for you to take back to your team and say, hey, listen, I did a two-hour sales training, sales coaching class. This is it. These are minimum expectations that you as a leader should expect from your team right here. Because if these are all there with your team, the mindset will be right. The positivity bias will be right. Change your perspective. Instead of looking at things this way, look at the things this way. 
change your perspective on how you view life, how you view customers, how you view interactions, how you view sales, how you view what you do, how you communicate that to people. Change your perspective, which we've been so ingrained for since this time. Right? The way you do that is you practice it. You show people differently. You control your controllables. Instead of using, I can't, I won't, I shouldn't, you use, I can, I will. I have a rule in my house. And I got this from Casey Jacob. So if Casey sees this, I want to give him credit because he coached me. He says to me, um, I want to write a book. I want to write a sales book. I have a lot of information. I'd love to write a sales book and, and, and give my love of sales to people. But I said, Jack, Casey, I, I can't, I can't, I, I don't even know where to start. He goes, first of all, you just, you just did the ultimate thing that I can't stand. From a coaching perspective, I said, what? He goes, you, you use the two words right. that should never be used. I can't. He goes, instead of using I can't in anything, replace those words with I will. I will. I will write a book. I will go to see this customer. I will give these people the best rates possible. I will develop the best textile company, that, which is so sustainable in the industry. I will have the best, most optimal team. Those are slight things that you can change. Always think about what you can do to get better every single day, what that looks like. Finally, why is this important? You a sports guy? You a sports guy? What's your favorite team of all time? Celtics. Okay. What team in particular of the Celtics? 2008. Okay, 2008. There was a word. Who you were born to? What was your favorite team of all time? Liverpool. Liverpool. Soccer. Any team in particular that was better than the other? Any year was better than the other? I would say the last three years. With Luck. club, with club on board. With okay. Salah, right? Soccer. Wait, yeah, yeah. So wait, wait, uh, Salah and last three, last three years of Liverpool. Not this year, last three years. I'm not a soccer guy, but think about it from this perspective. Think about it from this perspective. The successful teams, the successful people. You remember the 08 Celtics because of their chemistry, because of yeah. that word, yeah. which means together. Mbutu was something with, of a rallying cry for that team that to this day, we still remember yep. one word when you talk about team chemistry. My favorite team was the 04 Red Sox. First team to win the World Series in 86 years. And the reason why was because they had this. Yep. They had this. They had such a close team chemistry. Band of Idiots. From the Band of Idiots, from Johnny Damon's beard all the way to Kurt Schilling's bloody sock. They had this. Liverpool. The last three years, I'm sure you were drawn to them, not just because of their a great soccer team, but because that team embodied what this is. I'm sure you guys watch uh, Lasso, Ted Lasso. You've seen the show with the, the soccer show with Jason Sadukis on Apple TV. I haven't seen the show. Oh, you should watch it. It's like it. a light show, but they all are under respect is the key thing that they touch before every game. Chemistry matters. And the reason why is they call this like the neurolinguistic approach. Now, I'm not a scientist. I am not a, a neurologist. But I know that in each one of our brains, there's certain chemicals that drive emotion. Endorphin. Right? I know that there's cortisol. I know that there's serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. I know that those three things right there drive how we feel and how we interact with people. I know that these here drive positivity. You know what the most important thing is in order to drive positivity? Energy. Energy. What else? I would say... I would say who you surround with. Your mindset. 
humor. Laughing. Gratitude. Humor. Smiling. All drives up energy, drives up endorphins, drives up this positivity, this positive mindset. Share that with your teams. Share that with your customers. Smile more. H-A-G. Have an attitude of gratitude. Say thank you. Send thank you notes. Make people feel like they are the most important people in the planet. As Sal Dupoli said in my class about a month ago, make people fall in love with you. You want them to write their name, your name, in their hearts. That's the same thing as when you start the day and you say you say good morning to the person, but you say good morning to them directly to say their name, like good morning. I, know, I work with someone named Liz, or I say, hope you have a great weekend, Liz. Like you make it seem like you're personable to them. Yeah. Everything's personal. Everything that we do is personal, right? Have an attitude of gratitude. If you want to drive this and drive chemistry with your team in particular, and we talked about this uh, weeks ago, Smile. Show them that you love them and they will love you back. Same thing with your customers. This drives how we talk and how we communicate. Self-deprecating humor. I use it all the time. Bald-headed, bearded guy going into dermatology practices. I use it with my students all the time, right? Humor drives emotion, drives positivity, smiling. Vitally important. If you don't have this, if you have dysfunction with your team, this is what can happen. The opposite of the pyramid. Right, exactly. Distrust, conflict, lack of commitment, accountability, lack of results. We've all been there. I've seen reps that are just like this, right? So these are the, 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 the brain chemicals that you can combat that with. Oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, endorphin, all of these things right here can drive better results, better accountability, better trust, right? This is what leads to great sales reps. This is what I contend right here leads to the top one percenters. Oops, top one percenters. These are the people right here that win awards. Those are the people constantly are up on stage. Not many times I see a tense, nervous, stressed, upset, sad, depressed, lethargic, and fatigued person winning awards at a sales conference. Never. Just saying. Right? So think about you. Well, that's the why you ask sometimes before the class, what is your mindset right now? Like, how are you feeling? What are your, what are your, what are your top five feelings that you're feeling right now? Right, exactly. That's right? what you ask, yeah. Because if your mindset's not right, then you can't negative. be right when we're talking for an hour on Zoom or, or when we're doing something like this, Yeah. right? If you're not excited, if you're not feeling it, then it's not going to come out. Then I'm just wasting my time and you're wasting your time, Yeah. right? So think about it from this perspective. You, you who lead teams and you who are in, interfacing with people and customers, this is the side you have to be at. If you want to get up that pyramid to where people like you, respect you, and trust you, this quadrant is where you need to be. Make sense? So go back to your goals. Go back to your goals. What were your two goals that you listed? On Monday morning, I'm heading to Milwaukee and then uh, later in the week to Chicago, visiting all new prospective accounts, going with all the energy to have an opportunity to build and close business and more than that to help them and to drive growth in their big growth and success in their businesses. That's one of the goals. The second goal is to launch an e-commerce that we've been building for our business and launch it on Friday. As the team is wrapping up or doing some final adjustments, the second goal is to launch it and to push it into the market. Huge goals, huge goals. I want to know how Friday goes. I wish you nothing but success, right? Thank you. Thank I wish you, you nothing thank you. but success in that. What were your two goals? So my goal was one of them was more just like, I'm trying to go to bed before midnight every night because I sometimes go to bed late in the 
not productive towards my day. Like I need to sleep my seven hours, I feel like. And then another goal is we have a similar thing that we're launching a new type of um, lending platform and um, we're launching it like next week. And I've been a big part of working on it. So I need to make sure that everything we have, I have a meeting with the CEO and with the CFO. And I have like a plan to explain to them how we're going to start with the introduction to the process to our customers. Got it. Huge. Huge. Good luck this week. Yeah. All right. So make sure when you guys write goals down, they're smart. Right. I'm sure you guys have heard this acronym before specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time bound. Like you got a goal for Friday. Right. I'm sure that this has been in the works for a long time. Make sure that you follow this for format. Right. Because otherwise, goals just go out there in the air. If you say that this is, I want to go to sleep and I want to sleep seven hours, it starts tonight. Right. Yeah. It starts tonight. I want to win President's Club and be up on the stage next year. But there are micro goals that I need to achieve in order to do that. And that I need to get my reps where they need to be up on stage. Right. And there are certain goals that I have to do in order to get them where they need to go. Specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time bound. Finally, all right, after today, like you said, start with a goal a day. You'll send us the slides, right? These are proprietary, but I will. Right? I think will. About, <laughs> yeah. Think about how you practice positive behaviors in your routine. What does that look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? How does it come across to your customers? How do you develop those necessary steps to get up that ladder, to get up that pyramid to where they like you and respect you and want to do a business uh, transaction with you? Practice your weaknesses, control your controllables, and use these endorphins as we talked about. Smile more. Be present. Laugh. Don't take life so seriously. We only get one chance to go around this. We might as well make it what it is. Have fun doing it. We're in sales. We sell every day. It's such a great opportunity to be in front of people every single day. So that is what I would say is your action plan going forward. Questions, comments, concerns.